to improve to 12 and 3 on the season. 12 wins on the year, 11 of them have been one score games, heart pounder after heart pounder. Check your pulse, you're 12 and 3. Minnesota getting another close one against a New York team that has fared quite nicely in one score games as well, but not in this case. It's an L now sitting at 8, 6, and 1. Emery Hunt, Will Brinson. We should have known. Uh, it's the Giants at the Vikings. It's two teams that have played nothing but one-score ball games this season. And again, we get a one-score game decided in the final seconds. It's a kick there, 61 yards by Greg Joseph. Uh, first word goes to you here, Emery. Are either of these teams any good? I know we're going to see Minnesota in the playoffs. <laughs> There's a good chance we see New York as well. But again and again, it's one-score games. Is this luck? Is this the ball bouncing your way? Is this clutch gene or is this something in between? Great question, Joe. I think it's all of the above. And fans <laughs> want to hear, hey, we're the best 8-6-1 and one team in the league. And other fans are like, hey, we're the best 12-3 and three team in the league. But reality sets in is like, hey, the Giants are really good on defense. They can run the heck out of the football, have a game break in the backfield, and they're being efficient in their approach in the passing game. You do have to give credit to Daniel Jones. Played the best game I thought of his career, going over 300 yards, got a touchdown as well. Did have the interception, but he did lead them down the field to get the what looked to be the potential uh, tying point. So he did good in all facets of the game. On the Vikings side, they're explosive on offense. They don't have any defense. They don't make adjustments on defense, and they live and die by the big play. So to answer your question, it's a little bit of everything, but I will say this. Both of these teams, if they get into the postseason, we know the Vikings are, the Giants still yet to be determined, I think are first-round exits out of the playoffs because of that up-and-down play. you got to be playing consistent ball in the postseason. Anyone who frequents the pick-six pod like myself knows where Will Brinson stands <laughs> on the Minnesota Vikings, but I will still offer this floor here, Will, as the Vikings yet again in a one-score game come out on the winning side. But as Emery sort of alluded to there, the defense has not been good this year. It's a bend but don't break, and then they break there in the fourth quarter to allow the Giants to tie this game from behind. Like, total sum of the parts, who are the Vikings to you? I, 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 uh, 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 an enigma, an enigma, like confusion, an enigma wrapped in a riddle. So it, it's, it is so hard. Like Justin Jefferson, and Dalvin Cook are just elite level talents at their position. Um, you know, of course they have Garrett Bradbury, a one time, uh, <laughs> I, I once picked for uh, offensive rookie of the year, uh, mis misguidedly, mm. uh, but he's been playing really well. The offensive lines improved, um, you know, they, they have all these pieces where you think that, man, if they put it all together in any moment, they can just dominate. But we just we had seen that. I mean, they, they've had, I think, uh, maybe like one or two blowouts on each side. And then 11, I think it's 10-0 or 11-0 in one-score games. It, that's insane. It's, it's literally, you can't, it's, it's not replicable. It's not, it's, it shouldn't be possible. And you're going to have some regression to the mean. The question is, when does it occur? I don't think it's like, a, I, I do think, give, cre give credit to Kevin O'Connell. Like he's coached his team up. They're smarter. They're, they're uh, more aggressively, off more aggressive offensively than they were last year under Mike Zimmer. And I, I mean, I, I tend to agree with Emory that we'll probably see them get bounced in the first round, but it's largely going to determine who ends up getting into that seven spot. We, we, we assume they'll be the two seed, although Minnesota, I mean, excuse me, San Francisco could potentially walk them down. Very interesting. If, we saw Seattle lose, Detroit's losing, uh, the Giants, of course, lose to Minnesota. It's opening things up a little bit for old Mr. Rogers in, uh, in Green Bay there. Uh, it is an interesting situation, and it's going to be a good one here uh, between the Dolphins and the Packers later on this weekend. Uh, taking a look at the Giants side here coming up, it's Indy and Philly to close it out. What Philly team is on the field there in Week 18 might play a big role in this as well. 445 total yards here. Saquon looked to have some burst, and still you come away with the loss. Will... How detrimental here is the result following this type of performance from the Giants? Yeah, so for me with the Giants, I'm not going to get too worked up about these individual games to close out the season and or whether or not they make the playoffs. Okay. And I don't think Giants fans and I don't think the Giants front office or really the Giants ownership should either because what what this reminds me of, I believe it's 2017 Buffalo, right? When Sean McDermott came in um, and Brandon Bean either came the year that year or maybe even the year after that, but they had this new regime, this Carolina North regime, and they made the playoffs. Um, you know, he remember he, he pulled uh, Tyrod Taylor out and started Nate Peterman against the Chargers and he threw four picks in the first half, I think. It, it wasn't so much about the fact that they made the playoffs, which was great. I mean, they got bounced quickly. But what it was was you could see that they were clearly building something for the future. And I think you've got that with Joe Shane and, and with Brian Dable in particular at the head coach. So for me, just the way they're fighting, the way that with all these losses, all these injuries, excuse me, and, you know, just dealing with losses and, and the, the pressure of coming down the stretch, you've still got Daniel Jones at quarterback, to, to stay in the hunt. And they, they very well could end up making the playoffs. I don't think 
I think it's probably more likely than not. Uh, I, I'm just really impressed with the foundation they're building. So I'm not going to get too worked up about wins, losses, or playoffs or not for me uh, when it comes to the Giants. All right, let's take a look at something worth getting worked up about, and that's fantasy football here in Week 16. Seasons hanging in the balance. Trophies are on the line. Punishments abound as well. Vikings 27, Giants 24, and here's a look at some massive performances when it comes to the numbers. Kirk Cousins got you near 30. Daniel Jones serviceable as well at 22. Justin Jefferson uh, gets to the end zone to put the cherry on top of a 31-point performance. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.